don't take them out of the world. It's an interesting thing to read. God could easily just remove all believers, I suppose, as a means to preserve you, make sure that you're kept out of harm. Some might maybe entertain the thought there's some adva- there'd be some advantages to that kind of a means. Just take them out immediately. Uh, surely our salvation would be sure that way, they might think. We'd never have to deal with temptation if you're just taken out immediately. Never have to face that. Enemies would never have a chance to attack you. Just take them out. No possibility of falling into apostasy. Perhaps that you would have that advantage. But some may think, like, well, what's wrong with that? Why doesn't God just take us out? Why put us through all this trouble? Why subject us to danger? Well, the issue here, you must, we, might, we must uh, think here, is what gives God the most glory here? What gives God the glory? How can God show his power to keep his people if they're removed? How can God publicly display his superiority to the powers of darkness in us if we're not here? How can God test his work and prove that it's genuine, that it's real, if there's no testing process? And most of all, how can the wisdom of God be manifested to principalities and powers in high places in the church if it's not there? So if in view of these things, it's better that we stay, only for a while, of course, so that the Father's name would be glorified. Better for you to stay for a while, so that this great purpose of God can be worked out in you. Like, like we said, it's not, it's not for nothing. God's doing something with you. And what he's doing requires you to be here for a while. It's interesting to think about this, uh, how we're being, right now, be, we're being cultured for the world to come. Amen. And that's a process that's being worked out here in the earth. That's not something he does in the world to come. It's here. And so once we're, we believe, once we come into Christ, then you have to, get, God's going to shape you, mold you, to fit into that world to come. And that's, that's not just like, a, just like an instant thing he just says with the word. It's a process. Get, old th- get the dead things out of you. Get the sinful the cravings of the flesh. Get all of that out. Culture your appetite. Get you off of this and get you thinking more of what's to come. And I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, it's like this thing, like you know, thing, like forging a sword, getting it ready for battle, getting ready to, getting ready for the purpose intended for it. It's not fitted in this shape. It has to be, it has to be worked on a little bit. And then when it's ready, that's when you put it to use. That's when you stick it where it's supposed to go, when it, when it's suited for its purpose. And also, he's. Uh, this is a time we're being taught. This is a time we're learning about the things that are to come. We don't have to do all our learning there, but we're learning enough to, it's, it's, it's culturing our appetite for the world to come. So, in light of these things, the exhortation I'm going to give you is endure. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And even our Lord said that those who endure to the end, that's Matthew 24, 13, those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Not those who endure halfway. Not those who endure most of the way and maybe just drop off at the end, right before the finish line, give out, decide they don't want to run anymore, to the end. The end, that's the objective in the race, is getting across the finish line. And so I, I really do think a lot of what's said today, it really drops the ball in this area. It's people are not thinking about being ready for that time. Yeah, yeah. It's just like folks seem like so much on the race, but what about when the race ends? That's the objective. That's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm living for is for that time. Uh-huh. What, what I live there is a vapor, or I'm sorry, what I live here is a vapor in comparison to what I'm going to have there. That's right. This is going to be like just like seconds in your mind. Uh-huh. It'll be nothing in comparison. And so we live our lives in view of the world to come, the coming judgment. Does not, is not every man going to give an account for everything he said, everything he's done? We are to live with that in mind when I, when I finally finish the race. Now, it's interesting how in 2 Timothy it speaks of soldiers of Christ, soldiers. What does a soldier do? You know, like a soldier is someone who fights. Anytime you hear soldier, you think someone with a weapon, someone who's in combat, someone who's fighting his way to do something. And if, therefore, if that's the case, if that's what a soldier does, that's his job, that's his objective in life, then endurance is a key requirement. 
if you're going to be a good soldier. At the end of each battle, or going into any battle, the objective of the soldier is win and remain standing. No one's going to go into a battle thinking like, all right, lose, get killed, get defeated. That's not what anyone thinks going into a battle. They're thinking, we want to win. We want to be standing at the end of this battle so that we can press on and fight again and win. That's why we're to endure as a good soldier, not just a soldier, a good soldier. I think it's very fitting that it's said it that way. Good soldiers, they're skilled in combat. A good soldier, they're wise before their foes. They grow stronger as they progress. They're ready for battle. Now, seeing that you remain in the world, I exhort you, endure. Now, just think of, like, the Apostle Paul at the end of his journey. What did he say? I finished my course. I've kept the faith. That's like, I've won. I, I'm st- I remain standing the whole time. I made it to the finish line. I win. Even Peter spoke out. It's now time for me to set off this tabernacle. Now's the time. I made it to the end. I'm there. I survived. God kept me all the way to the end. He kept me from falling. He gave me the ability to endure. And Jesus himself declared on the cross, It is finished. I completed the work God gave me. Made it all the way to the end. I didn't fail. So there is a finish line, brethren. And I exhort you, live in view of the time that you get to that point. Live in view of the end. And so you're going to need endurance to make it to the end. So I exhort you, abide in Christ so that God can show others His keeping power in you. And now open for your comments.